Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining us on this webinar, um, aborting everything you need to know about the Belgian APD decision of the IAB Europe TCF. Um, there was a decision last week uh, from the Belgian APD. We think it's a very important one that it has uh, deep consequences for the advertising industry, publishers, advertisers, and vendors. And as the domain, we've been getting a lot of questions from our clients, our partners, or prospects on the topic. And we think it's important to clearly present this decision, uh, discuss together how businesses should adapt their compliance and operations to that decision, and also discuss openly together what the future will look like. As a CMP, we're obviously front and center in collecting and managing content, and we're driving some of those discussions at the IB Rup in the tech lab or with vendors. And obviously, we want to upend that discussion with you here as well today. We've also published documentation in our help center uh, that we'll try to keep updated um, and that we'll recommend everyone to take a look at. Joining me today, so I'm joined by Toma Adimo, who's our uh, Chief Privacy Officer, Antonio, who's our VP Product, and Frank, who's the CEO at Agnostic. Um, so they tell me, for those of you that maybe don't know us yet, um, we build a content and preference management platform to help our clients get in compliance with data privacy regulations and to also put their users in control of their personal data. Um, we have one of the leading CMPs out there for cookies and outtakes, advertising and social. We're deployed on uh, hundreds of thousands of websites and mobile apps and TV apps today uh, and see billions of devices every, every quarter. And we also recently released what we call our PMP preference management platform uh, and a preference center for helping manage uh, direct marketing preferences around emailing and, and, um, and similar uh, preferences and user choices. Uh, we're also joined by Agnostic today. Frank, if you want to briefly introduce Agnostic. Yeah, sure. I'm Frank. I'm the happy founder of Agnostic. We joined the domain a month ago. Actually, Agnostic has been focusing for years now about understanding what vendors and cookie and trackers are doing on your ecosystem. Um, I believe today it would be really interesting to see how uh, the last decision may impact the way you're going to handle your vendor. And uh, please feel free asking many questions. So next step is I will introduce the agenda. Uh, well, short agenda. We will try to focus on your questions. And I believe you have many questions about the impact on your business. So what is TCF for the people who don't know it? it APD decisions, recommended actions, and uh, as I mentioned, focus on Q&A. And uh, let's go for Thomas. Hi, everyone, and thank you, uh, Frank. Um, so before we look at uh, what the, the, the APD decision means for publishers in Europe, um, I, we thought that we, it would make sense to, to take a step back um, and talk about the TCF itself. Um, so I'll be quick, as I know that most of you are already familiar with it. Um, but so uh, can you move to the next slide for me? Thank you. Um, so first, um, the question is, why do we need the TCF in the first place? So I'm not going to go into details here, but I'll just say that there are requirements uh, that must, must be met since the GDPR came, came into force. And we're mostly talking about uh, the transparency principle to make uh, any processing lawful. Uh, but there's also uh, consent as a valid legal basis uh, for such processing. So uh, that's what we need uh, in the GDPR. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, but then uh, here is the advertising industry. Uh, and, and I would say it's actually a, a very uh, simplified version of how the industry operates. Uh, but what we can see here is that, for instance, there are uh, DSPs. We need to obtain a consent uh, from the user. That's because they are uh, data controllers. And, and they don't have a direct relationship with, uh, with this um, uh, user. And so in other words, there are multiple data controllers in the advertising industry hidden behind one party that has a direct uh, relationship with the audience. Uh, I'm talking about the, the, the publisher. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so in other words, uh, uh, we, we, we need to, uh, we as the uh, advertising industry need to provide the right level of transparency and the appropriate controls that publishers and users 
are going to need uh, to make sure that the industry uh, can operate lawfully. You need, for that, you need a framework, uh, a standard. Um, and uh, what you really need is actually a protocol to ensure that the fr there is a free flow of data, of information from the data controllers to the publishers and then to the users. But that's what, you know, there's also the other way around where once the user has already consented, you need to make sure that this information is shared with the data controllers that, that are going to need it. Um, so next slide, please. And that's, uh, there comes uh, the, the, the TCF. Uh, so that's the protocol the advertising industry came up with uh, to solve for those uh, problems. Um, there are four pillars. Uh, first, there is a, a set of policies that publishers, vendors, and CMPs must abide by. Uh, there's a specification that participants need to implement. Um, there's a global vendor list so that there is a centralized and up-to-date list of all the participants. Um, and there are CMPs. They are not directly managed by uh, IAB Europe. Uh, that's Didomi, for instance. Um, and, and with this decision from the APD, uh, all the pillars of the TCF, TCF have been impacted. Next slide, uh, please. And so now uh, let's look at the APD decision itself and what it means for the, the TCF and IAB Europe. So first, uh, when it comes to IAB Europe, uh, the very first, uh, the, the, the most important, I would say, uh, takeaway of the decision is that the TC string is uh, considered, uh, so the TC string is uh, the consent signal or the consent information that's uh, stored by, by players in the advertising industry. And so the TC string is personal information, it's considered personal information for which participants are gonna need to establish a legal basis, uh, be it consent or legitimate interest or something else. Uh, then uh, IB Europe is a data controller of that consent information that wasn't necessarily uh, a given. Um, and that's regardless of the fact that they don't process uh, the, the, the consent information. What's also very interesting is that IAB Europe is presumably a joint controller with TCF participants. So that is uh, vendors, CMPs, publishers. Um, next slide, please. Um, and uh, as a result of them being qualified as a data controller, um, the APD considers that they failed to establish a legal basis. Um, and that's because they didn't know they were a controller in the first place, or they did not consider themselves as a data controller. Uh, and the APD also, also considers that the, the security measures in place uh, or put in place by IB Europe uh, to protect the integrity of the consent signals were not uh, sufficient. As a result, uh, IB Europe got fined 250,000 euros. Uh, they will have to come up with a plan, with an action plan within the next two months. Um, from the moment this um, action plan gets validated by the APD, they will have six months to comply with the decision. Next slide, thank you. So now let's look at the the um, uh, the consequences of the decision for publishers. Uh, so that's going to be a focus on publishers and, and advertisers. Uh, so first, it looks as though uh, the uh, the use of legitimate interest in the context of the TCF um, will not be okay anymore. Um, so consent should probably always be required. Uh, second users are not going to be able to make an informed decision uh, with respect to hundreds of vendors. Um, so that probably means that uh, their number is probably gonna have to go down. Um, we'll, we'll talk about that later. And, and finally, the information that's currently provided to users in the context of the framework is probably not uh, satisfactory. Uh, we're mostly talking about the purposes of the framework, uh, which were qualified by the APD as unclear and sometimes even misleading. Um, so uh, things are gonna need to change here. So how do we fix this while uh, IAB Europe works on its uh, action plan? I'll pass it over to Antonio, uh, our VP product, who's gonna walk you through the, the recommendations, our recommendations in relation to uh, this decision. 
Thank you, Thomas, and uh, hello, everyone. So I'm Antonio, and I work uh, at the Dynamic handling the product team. So um, a few recommendations of what we are able to do and you are able to do also with our platform. And our first recommendation is about the legitimate interest. Uh, today, as uh, Tomat said, uh, the, the APD sets, so points out that legitimate interest cannot be a legal base for real-time bidding. So, um, but the first thing that you can do is to restrict or, or to filter all those vendors that uh, are based or the consent are based on or, or the legal base of uh, the treatment is based on legitimate interest. Um, in, in, for our, our clients, we have this uh, tool that is called the publisher restrictions, where we can explicitly, uh, in two clicks, uh, filter all the different vendors that uh, are based on legitimate interest. The um, a second recommendation should be to evaluate and limit the number of vendors for which consent is collected. The first thing that you have to do is to identify uh, that ecosystem of vendors. Uh, for that, uh, obviously, uh, either you have, uh, you have different ways to do it, uh, either crawling the website or either uh, if you already connect, you already have a CFB, you can also try to analyze uh, what are the risks, the risks of these vendors. Um, especially uh, today, with uh, with the agnostic tool that uh, recently joined the Didomi family, we are able to provide you with uh, a kind of a, a ranking of vigilance uh, for those vendors based on different factors. Uh, the one factors could be: uh, Are they doing? Uh, uh, data treatments outside Europe. Uh, there is a, a, a list of it. I cannot describe you the whole uh, ranking algorithm that we that we uh, have there. But uh, in any case, uh, agnostic solution can help you straightforward identifying the vendors, evaluating them with the um, advices of that agnostic team as well. You can uh, merge that with monetization, seeing. And, and finally, getting from the list of 800 vendors to the list of, I don't know, 50 vendors that produce 90% of the revenue and evaluating the risk of the few of them that produce revenue, but actually they are not compliant at all. Um, Maybe just to add one sentence about what Antonio said, actually this is what we've been doing for years, I mean, trying to really assess vendors. And definitely there's a, there's a legal issue as well as there's a contribution issue. And, uh, what we aim also to provide joining the DOM is the fact that you will be able to somehow filter this list, assess this list with many criteria, uh, and then be able to produce it for your own uh, DDoM notice. That's one of the steps and one of the goals uh, we may have with you. So like this, obviously, we don't cover the full case because uh, today uh, the, this, uh, the APD says that uh, the list is too large, so it's not a real consent. Uh, if I granularly want to make a choice for the 800 of them, it's almost impossible, but it doesn't express neither a limit of them. Uh, so uh, it's a matter of uh, kind of reducing this list and make it the short as, as we can, but uh, well, for that, we need to, to have the right tools in place to, to be able to identify that. Um, the third recommendation will be about clarity. Uh, first, clarity on the data collected. So uh, we strongly suggest that uh, you display the, the, the categories of data that you are collecting in your, in your sites. And explicitly, you can use different parts of the CMP. Uh, in this example, we, we, it's, it's our own consent notice in our, in our SaaS platform. And we try to explicitly uh, put the data categories in the first uh, in the first layer, you can put it in the second layer, and there's many ways to do it. But in any case, uh, try to uh, explicitly uh, put it straightforward on your notice. The the second one uh, or the the fourth one will be also about clarity, as uh, as Tama, uh, talk about it. The 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 APD is saying that the, the purposes of the TCF are not clear enough. And, and risk the, the validation of the consent itself because mostly the end user doesn't understand really what he is accepting. And, and so what we uh, propose you is to nest those purposes into categories. Categories that are more explicit where you can write it with human words <laughs> and, uh, and make it more clear for the user. 
Um, this obviously it's uh, it's quite simple to, to configure in our platform as well. Um, the fifth recommendation it's about the the consent withdrawal, which is another point that is uh, highlighted by the by the APD. Uh, which is the the validity of the consent is risked when I don't know how to revoke it. Yeah, because I express it, I say yes, I consent. But if I change my mind, how can I access to this information, manipulate it, and ch change my 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 decision? No? So uh, what we suggest is to explicitly uh, try to create a space uh, where people can straightforward see uh, where they can manage their data. Uh, our advice is to put it together with the profile uh, for the logged environment. If you don't have a logged environment, then obviously uh, you, you can put it somewhere else. But uh, to create a place and something that is explicit, you don't have transparency. It's it's uh, it's what creates trust today. So do, if you take these links to revoke your consent and it's hidden in the fourth page of your privacy policy, OK, fine, you will be compliant. But until the moment somebody says no, <laughs> and, and now is the moment. So uh, what we suggest is go straight forward. Don't be scared. Uh, the most clear and easy for, for your user to manipulate this, the most transparency you, you, you give to it, the most trust you generate into them. And, and so then you create fidelity as well. So um, the first recommendation is once you have done all this work, uh, you can use, uh, I suppose, all CMPs and our CMPs as well, uh, give you the possibility to restart collecting consent. So uh, if we, if the APD says, okay, up to here, the consent is not valid, then do your corrections and restart collecting yeah, and uh, try to clean your base uh, from, uh, from scratch with new bases. And so, just to recap, the six advices that we give, it's uh, require consent or filter the, 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 the publishers uh, via the publisher restrictions, mostly targeting the legitimate interest. Uh, the second one is to ask a limit of numbers of vendors which uh, consent is collected. So analyze your list, reduce it, and uh, with our help, with agnostic help, or with your Excel file, but try to reduce that list to what makes sense. Now, present the categories of data collected in the CMP. Put categories to clarify the IID purposes. Make a constant withdrawal accessible. And after that, start collecting consent again. Uh, so, if you need help implementing those recommendations, uh, don't, don't don't hesitate to reach out. You can contact the Domi, uh, our support, but also uh, agnostic team to to help you, and really will be happy to to help you. And I think agnostic team have a strong uh, a strong experience accompanying uh, really large clients into this into this process because um, it's not it's something new. Yes, the the new part is that it got forced to do it. Yeah, but actually something that makes sense since long time ago, and they have been doing this for years. So um, don't hesitate. And I give the hand to Jawad, who is going to try to present you the possible scenarios in the future. We have quite a few um, questions already, so maybe we take. Uh, we take them now before we move forward because I think most of them are based on uh, the recommendations that you just presented. Um, so we can we can maybe take them more or less in order. Uh, the first one was a simple one. It was just about whether we would share those slides uh, to participants. I think that wasn't planned, uh, but we have published documentation that covers all those topics um, and we've added that link to the chat. The second question that was on recommendation number two was uh, how do we decide what is the maximum number of vendors that should be allowed? And is there a legal basis for that? Um, that's something that we've discussed a lot internally uh, as to what is the optimal number of, of vendors to keep in your consent notice. Um, I, I, can, I can take a first stab at this one. I think our general recommendation is from the APD decision, it is not clear what is an acceptable number. The exact uh, phrasing of the APD is that 
they emphasize that the large number of third parties um, is not compatible with the condition of a sufficiently informed consent, nor with the broader transparency duty set out in the GDPR. So they don't say how many is too many. Um, they, they just say that a large number um, kind of like does not allow for consent to be correct and informally for consent to be valid. So the way we've approached it, and we'll discuss a little bit more in, in our risk analysis in, in, a, in a few minutes, but the way we are, we're approaching this and we think our uh, publishers and advertisers should approach this is to find what is the right balance for you as a business between your compliance requirements and your monetization requirements that are one of your valid uh, concerns as a business. Um, and so on that, Agnostic has experience and, and our general statement there was that from a monetization perspective, um, for websites around 200 vendors seems to be the sweet spot and around 50 for mobile apps seems to be sweet spot in terms of maximizing your uh, monetization. And then the question becomes how to identify what vendors to keep and that's where agnostic can help. Whether 200 vendors is still too many or not is then a compliance question that the APD does not answer clearly in their uh, recommendations or enable at the moment to say whether that's too many or not. Um, Thomas or Frank, anything you would add on this one? Well, I would say that, um, as you mentioned, uh, there's no one number that fits all the situations. Plus, we have to consider the fact that uh, it is still a blur industry when you go to ad tech. You have head of bidders, you have many as well new vendors coming from you know data environment, uh, counter measurement, viability. So uh, it should make sense in the way that you should understand what your supply chain is as a media owner. You have to really understand what's valuable and not valuable for you, and you have to screen everything, which was not really done previously. And second part of it, you have to use common sense means it has to be balanced. I mean, it's like what like Neil was saying in France, it has to be proportionals. I mean, every vendor you have should mean something to you. You should know them, you should have an idea of what they do for you. So it's kind of work that uh, many publishers in France have been doing. We have this barometer in France uh, about all big publishers and how many vendors they have in the vendor list. What we see is that globally, the industry has been really understanding that it's no use having 800 vendors, plus the fact that every week, five to six new vendors are updated in the TCF. So they want to get back um, in control about what they do. So let's say, as you mentioned, like 200 vendors for monetization is quite a sweet spot. And then you need your regular vendors for, I don't know, DMP, CDP, whatever you need. So yeah, question is still open, but um, just probably help. And what can be important, and just to close on it, is the fact that you do the work of assessing all those vendors. It will help you in case of having a control from the DPA. I, uh, I can add that well, it, it will work, work with the questions uh, that just came. Uh, there's, a, there's a few of them, so let's take them before we move to the next step. Uh, there's one that is quite uh, straightforward. Recommendation number one, uh, do you suggest to remove legitimate interest for all purposes? Uh, no, the, uh, the APD only targets uh, legitimate interest as a legal base for real-time bidding. So we are only talking about the, the, the perimeter of the TCF. Uh, legitimate interest for some other things uh, is, is not in question in, in this presentation on this moment. The, uh, uh, to, to add to this, um, uh, there is another question regarding the, the features and the, the special features um, that's sort of related to this question. Um, when it comes to uh, the special features um, of the TCF, uh, consent is always required, so no change uh, on this front. With respect to the special purposes, um, legitimate interest is still the only legal basis that's available in the context of the TCF. So publishers are not going to be able to do anything on that for the time being. That's on IB Europe to make uh, uh, the change that's going to be required if required, because uh, we're talking about product improvement. And so it's not clear whether it's actually uh, part of the the APD decision uh, on whether legitimate interest is a, is a, an appropriate legal basis. Thank you, Thomas. There is another question. Could you explain how to limit the number of vendors on apps? I work with vendors, but they vendors, those vendors work with other vendors. Um, I think it's a, a question for, uh, for Frank, but I think it's uh, the... Uh, so, uh, 
Yeah, yeah. yeah, app environment is, is really different than open web. So uh, it's pretty difficult today to really audit the iOS ecosystem for obvious reasons. But actually, we have some approaches regarding everything which is related to Android. So we may have a special focus on that and what's the method is. But it is not as robust as it will be when it's in the open web. But we can still do many things. One, one small point I think that's important to keep in mind is that the APD decision um, indicates that um, the user cannot give informed consent when the vendor list that presented to the user is too long. And so it, it, what the APD decides on was really about the notice itself and, and what's being shown to the user. So the first thing you want to do is change that list, the one that you have direct control on, the, the ones that the list of vendors you're collecting consent for. The fact that some other vendors might be loaded on your website first, um, as long as they don't have consent, as long as when they don't have consent, they don't collect any data and process any data that might that might be somewhat acceptable. Um, but that, you know, being able to control those will require working with your vendors more directly. So in our mind, the first step is reduce the list of vendors you collect consent for if you're, for instance, collecting consent for all the TCA vendors. And then second, work with your vendors to make sure that any sub vendors that they load does not get loaded if they don't have consent, for instance. Um, I think that second one obviously is a little bit more, um, it will take a little more time to actually be put in place. Thank you. Thank you, Wat. There is another question. Uh, will the domain delete personal data collected on the basis of a TC string? So I, I can answer this one. Um, so that's in paragraph uh, 535 of the decision, if I'm, if I'm right. Um, that's where they're asking, the APD is asking IB Europe to delete um the data that they have access to uh in the context of the global scope of the tcf and it's not clear whether it applies to other participants in the framework um, our position is that our publishers should probably uh, recollect consent which would have to the effect to erase um the uh the tc string that's that's been collected previously um, and uh, with respect to whether CMPs are going to require a uh, legitimate interest or are going to be required to establish a, a legal basis, be it legitimate interest or consent, that's something that we're currently working on. Uh, we'll have to decide whether we uh, think that the scenarios elaborated by the APD uh, fit with the kind of services that we provide. Uh, that's not an easy answer, um, but for the time being, we're, we're um, recommending uh, recollecting consent. Thank you, Thomas. Um, there is a question that already was uh, answered by you, what, but I think it's important for everyone to hear it. Uh, recommendation number four: Do you suggest to use TCF stacks? Um, we we don't suggest it. Uh, you can always continue using those, but uh, what we suggest you is to use explicit uh, human understandable language on the using categories, and uh, either categories of data or categories of purposes, uh, to make it more simple. Because the, the yeah. stacks are, are also challenged as the purposes. Yeah. I think generally, to that point, the stacks and the purposes have been in the challenge in the sense that the APD does not seem to think that they're clear enough for the user to be able to make choices that are informed. So they're not easy enough to understand to the user. Uh, and so the rec our recognition at the moment on this one is that you don't necessarily ha need, to ha need to hide them. So it's not necessarily a problem to have the stacks or the purposes visible, but you need to complement them with a better explanation to users so that uh, it's not just the stacks and the users have has more information to make choices there. Um, I think the APD choice the, uh, message there was pretty clear. I think it, it also goes with the, the next question that was on the recommendation six around recollecting consent from users um, and, and why we recommend that. I think the general idea behind the APD decision is that unless our recommendations one to five are applied plus some other fixes that might need to be done in the ID Europe, again, the recommendations cannot naturally solve everything. 
Um, but the idea is that unless all of that is done, then the consent that was collected before uh, isn't isn't a, a, a valid legal basis for um, advertising via TCF. And so the idea is to say that as publishers, you can put all those recommendations in place that answer some of the APD concerns, and then recollect consent from users so that you have a stronger uh, legal basis at that point. Uh, again, not everything is solvable via the CMP or only by yourself as a publisher, uh, but we think that those recommendations are a good basis to solve most of the problems, and that once they're in place, then you should recollect after that. Um, I would like to understand why you keep recommending TCF in the first place. It is not compliant framework. Consent even something are not valid, which might lead to data deletion or personal data. And the only reason to push TCF is to protect their TV business. Why else would anybody recommend the TCF? Thomas? Uh, I can, I can, yeah. Okay, Thomas, go ahead. I, I, I can go and then you, you can add anything that I missed. Uh, but I would just say that we're not recommending TCF. Um, we're just facilitating it uh, for the publishers. We we relying on us to to implement the TCF structure. We don't live off uh, the TCF. We don't you know we don't generate any money from it. Um, so we're not recommending it. Uh, the only thing we know is that it's the there's no plan B. So tomorrow, if it goes down, uh, I think the the users are actually going to be left off in a worse position um, just because um, the, the transparency and consent framework was designed to provide more information regarding what's happening behind the scene. So it's probably not perfect at the moment. It's probably far from being perfect. Um, but that's the only tool that exists uh, in relation to, to this. So it's already bringing something to the table. We're not recommending it, but we're not you know, disregarding it either. Jawad, do you want to? Yeah, I, I think that's a that's a very good question to ask. I don't want us to uh, act like we're shying away from answering it, but I, I think it's important for people in the call to understand what our role is. We're not a publisher. We're not, you know, a regulator. We're not an advertiser. We're not part of TCF. We're a CMP. So our job is working with our clients to help them achieve their main business goal and also be in compliance. And obviously, uh, you know, this creates a complicated situation for a lot of our clients. Some of them are publishers, some of them are advertisers. And so we can't, you know, as a business, and I think that's true for most businesses out there, we can't just go out there um, and, and assume that the TCF is down and that we now need to, you know, stop working with it entirely because that's indeed a, a, a big uh, a big transformation. So the way we've tried to look at, at this decision is, is a few ways. Generally, we think there are two possible scenarios to come. The first one is that the TCF, after six, eight, ten months of working with the APD, um, eventually gets validated. And at that point, after uh, um, Im implementing a lot of uh, required improvements, it gets some sort of legal stamp from the APD at that point that it's it's reasonably compliant, um, and it gets like an official uh, approval. There. And then scenario two is that the TCF, after six, eight, ten months of working with the APD, gets rejected and gets into a situation where there is not naturally a clear way to move forward from it. Um, so the first thing is I want to acknowledge that's a possible scenario. I personally don't believe that's the main one or that's the most likely one, but it's definitely one that could happen. And at that point, I think we need to have alternative solutions for businesses whose um, you know, uh, life re relies on advertising, either as publishers or as advertisers themselves. And so for those, I personally don't think that RTD will go down. I feel like other options will be put in place where content is still collected and passed directly maybe to vendors outside of TCF as a framework. And so those, the, the way we approach it is to say, look, we don't think that's the most likely scenarios when that's not necessarily the one we're the most focused on at the moment. That's one that we've started discussing with some vendors and some partners just to be sure that if we end up in that case, we have alternatives to offer as a CMP. But then it's true that we operate in a world where we think that this is still scenario number one, which is the IB Europe works with the APD and then gets to the point where uh, the APD is happy with the changes and the TCF uh, stays as the uh, remains as the standard for the industry. And you're perfectly, uh, you know, I think as a business, it's perfectly fine to maybe disagree with with our assessment there and think that maybe that scenario is not is not valid. And at that point, what consequences that has for your own businesses? Um, is obviously a big one. I think the, the, the immediate question that all businesses face 
is what to do in the next six, eight, ten months, where uh, during which the TCF is in that state where it is being discussed with the APD. Um, and so it is being challenged from a compliance standpoint. Contextual only uh, advertising is not actually a viable alternative because the APD was also pretty clear on their interpretation of the IP being personal data. And so the question is, what do you do as a business? If you're a publisher and 80 and 90 percent of your um, of your revenue is advertising, what are you supposed to do moving forward in the next six months? Uh, what option is just turn turn off advertising or stop doing advertising entirely? That will put you immediately into full compliance, but it will also cut down most of your revenue. And so the way we look at it again, I think it's a deeply legal question that all businesses have to answer themselves. Our position cannot be that we'll answer it for anyone on the call. But you know, the way we would look at it is first, will a DPA come after you while well, those discussions are ongoing? Do you think that that will happen or not? If you think it will, then maybe you need more drastic measures than you th if you think it won't. And if you think the APD and the CNIL and so on will be a little more open to the discussion while the TCF, uh, the AB Europe and the APD are discussing. And then second, how big of an impact is stopping advertising for your business? If you're a SaaS business and you still have the TCF enabled, but it, you know, it's a very, very marginal part of what you do, we would recommend you stop it entirely and, and that will um, uh, solve a lot of your problems. If you're a publisher and most of your revenue depends on that, maybe that's not an option for you from a practical perspective. And at that point, you have a choice to make. You have a risk analysis to do internally. Um, and so again, you know, I understand from, from Julian's point, I totally understand that um, different scenarios are possible. Uh, and I think businesses have to evaluate and address those internally. That's not something we can do. But our job definitely is to say first, and it will help you understand the consequences of that, will help you understand what you can do in the short term to address those uh, the requirements from the APD. And second, whatever happens in the future, obviously, as a CMP, we'll be there and implement whatever is needed uh, to support uh, your activities. And I, uh, so back to a few of those questions, because I think we're basically done with what we wanted to cover. Uh, so we'll, we'll focus on the questions. We have plenty more to go through. Um, All right, one question on the use of categories that uh, maybe Antonio take was how do we do, uh, how do we actually do that if we go back to our recommendation number three uh, that was presented categories of data collected in the CMP uh, text? Uh, how do you recommend we do that um, if, if you're a C uh, DDoMI customer? Yep. <laughs> I, uh, so for the categories of data. There is uh, there is a few ways to do it. Uh, there is a special field on the on uh, explicitly in our console, but you can uh, add some text on top of the of the purposes. So here is a space where you can already uh, kind of write uh, that in a transparent way, and then uh, you can also do did what we did, uh, which is. Uh, try to push that into the first layer of the content notice. Uh, obviously, we have to work a little bit with the CSS and, uh, and configuring something nice and friendly, and, which is our suggestion. Uh, we don't need to be transparent. Uh, all of this is about transparency. And all this is question about uh, the validity of the consent because the lack of transparency. So if uh, you can do the minimum, you can always say, okay, I, I put in a second layer of the consent notice, I put my categories, it's good. I transparently I say what data, what data I'm using and why I'm using those data. Or you can go straight forward and put it in front of the user, which uh, create trust also and fidelity. Um, I hope that solved the question. But in any case, I don't hesitate. I suppose it's a Didomi client that asked that since the question says that explicitly in the console. So don't hesitate to yes. get your client uh, success manager to to help you and guide you through it. Um, there is a question from Frederick on uh, why we're recommending to rely on consent for all purposes, including measurements, um, which clearly cannot work with consent. Uh, Thomas, maybe you want to take a stab at this one? Uh, so, so really, we're not recommending, uh, we're not you know, necessarily saying that consent should be required for everything, uh, but in its decision, the APD seems to indicate that uh, legitimate interest in the context of the TCF will not work. They're mostly focusing on advertising. Measurement is part of um, 
the advertising related purposes uh, that exist in the context of the framework. Um, so it's really up to publishers to make a decision as to whether concert or legitimate interest should be um, uh, pushed on, on, on our console. Um, we, we, we just make a recommendation that, that you know, publishers should think about it and eventually uh, use the, the publisher's uh, restrictions um, to, to impose a legal basis um, consent versus legitimate interest. Would you recommend, Thomas, that uh, publishers distinguish between TCF and advertising-related measurements by putting that one maybe on constant, and when they have internal measurement activities that those they could, if they think that fits, but maybe they could separate those out into a separate purpose and have that one as legitimate interest if they think that works? Absolutely. That, that, that would be something that, that works. It's really in the context of the TCF that's, that, that there is an issue at this point. So we don't know what, what the APD's position would be regarding anything else that's not happening outside of the, uh, that's happening outside of the TCF. There is um, another question from uh, Gauter Haas. If you don't use the DOM CMP as a publisher, but, not, but as an advertiser, isn't it better just to get out of the IB TCF? We are not suggesting really to, to go out. It, everything depends on how much revenue you are getting from it. Uh, but in any case, uh, the, the, what's happening today, I think overall is that it is, yes, something is wrong, but there is a time to fix it. Yeah? Or up to that time, uh, you, can, you don't risk anything. The maximum you can do is to follow the suggestions and say, okay, I, I did my part, yeah? but we are not suggesting to get out of the TCF. I mean, to, to, I'm not sure I understand the question, uh, but I would just say that mo most of the time advertisers do not uh, use the, the TCF. Uh, that's mostly used by, by publishers. So um, I, I'm, I'm not entirely sure I understand the question. If the person who, who sent the question wants to add clarifications, that, that could be uh, helpful. I think the, the question was for advertisers that do use the TCF, basically. So for advertisers that do use the TCF, and to Antonio and, and my points previously, if you have limited usage of it, uh, you know, I think that's where as a business you might want to disable it and, and feel like you're more comfortable with that as a, as a decision. Um, but if you're relying on it pretty extensively for all your advertising campaigns and for um, all your your data collection. I think that's where it gets uh, it gets harder to disable it. So again, we can't as as a CMP we can't recommend to disable it or not. Uh, we can only help you basically understand what you should look at internally to decide whether you should or not. Yeah, if if a, if an advertiser started using the the TCF, it's probably not to monetize its website, but it's probably to get closer to compliance. Uh, so. Uh, I'm assuming the, the use of the TCF in, for an advertisers would be a compliance uh, motivation. And so if today the idea is that um, the TCF does not bring you closer to compliance, maybe the, there's a decision to be taken as to whether you want to be part of it. I mean, really generally, as an advisor, you're using the TCF to support from a compliance perspective, your targeting and performance performance uh, operation. So you're going to be collecting user information or tagging users or segmenting users. Um, and then you're collecting content for that tagging. And then you're running advertising campaigns and performance campaigns based on that content that you've collected. Uh, so again, it's a, it's a trade-off and, and a risk question that I think advertisers have to answer as well. Um, There's a question. I think there are two. In, yep. No, go on. Go ahead, uh, go on. And there's a question from Lucas uh, Small. Uh, the recommendations are very useful, but are mostly focused on what we should do. Are you going to take any action on your end or make any changes in the CMP? Uh, I can I can try answering the question. Um, our our um, historic, you know, like we've always seen ourselves as a data processor. 
because I think that's related. This question relates to that. Um, we've always seen ourselves as a data processor, and so that means we we follow our customers' uh, instructions with respect to what goes in the CMP and what doesn't. Um, and so, in in this regard, um, we we don't we're not planning to impose any change to the CMP. Uh, we will not change. We're not necessarily planning on. We're just trying to add additional information that may be missing according to the APD. Um, but we're really letting our customers, and and it's also due to the fact that there are many interpretations out, out there. And we don't feel like we should impose a view, a particular view as to what compliance means for a specific publisher with a specific audience. Um, so that's, that, that would be uh, our stance for now. Uh, but given the fact that uh, the APD seems to consider that CMPs um, are also a controller of the, the consent information, we may have to change a few things. Uh, we're, we're still thinking about it, and, and we'll um, we'll communicate around that uh, if if we ever take a decision to to make changes to the CMP that would apply equally to all the publishers. One, uh, one small point to add there is what we want to do with, with our documentation and this webinar today was all as uh, solutions everyone could implement to respond to the APA decision um, via our CMP. Uh, we recognize that some of them could be better handled from a product perspective, where, for instance, we could help you present the categories of data collected in the CMP text, not just as text, but really manage that for you. So we are also obviously looking at this, at this decision as some items have to become part of a product roadmap. And that's something we're working on separately. Um, but obviously, with the timing being what it is, when, when you get a legal decision, we want to be able to react to it fast and give you the tools that we have today. And then in parallel to our discussion here, we'll be taking what we think is uh, product Im improvements that we need to do on our side. And we'll, we'll be working that in the coming months. Um, it's just that obviously, we can't wait months to tell you, here is what we think can be done. We needed to find more short-term solutions that could be implemented today. And so that's what we're focusing on uh, right now, basically. Yep, I can support that saying that um, the, there, there is two two different that, uh, things that involve us, which is uh, first of all the role that uh, that we play on it and uh, in our position of it, and then the second part is the transparency that that uh, that, that it's around all this framework and about all the cookie banners and and, and, and all the all the industry. I will say that uh, in this second one is something that we already uh, most of it anticipate. Uh, the, the lack of transparency is something that we have seen uh, since long time ago. Um, this is uh, this decision is just uh, somehow reconforting uh, some of the points that on research that we have uh, we have been digging uh, since months. And uh, yes, I think we'll soon communicate in a in a new set of a few things that we're going to do to try to make uh, compliance more transparent. Uh, to finally uh, serve uh, the, the, the final uh, the final user of the web, which is uh, the citizens. Um, yep. Yeah. So uh, stay tuned. There is an interesting uh, follow-up to the the question uh, Julian was asking earlier, um, and so so that's on the chat, and that. That has to do with the auditing capabilities of IAB Europe. Um, so I, I've, I've seen this article uh, that got shared, um, and uh, I, I think IAB Europe is very much aware of that. Uh, it was also part of the APD decision, and so let, let's see what they can come up with um, regarding the auditing auditing capabilities. Um, I, I, I agree that they're not going to be able to deliver anything if they don't offer anything on this front. So they are going to have to to make sure they can audit somehow um, the um, the vendors that are operating in the context of the, the TCF. Yeah, maybe just to add one thing about the auditing uh, process from IAB, we've been part of it. Uh, we've been talking about IAB and actually it's really, really complex. So it's not an easy thing. And what we also believe according to what we see is a good thing, but TCF is something we can audit because it's a standard. 
So it has to be, I believe, uh, be getting some more uh, features, more information, but at least that's something that exists uh, that really helped since now. Um, so we'll, we'll continue taking questions. We do have a fair amount of them. I think, Thomas, there's an interesting one from Mario that I think opens the discussion a little bit towards the recent decisions by the Australian DPA and the CNIL around data transfers to the US. The question is, can we separate in the CMP based on whether data gets transferred to the US or not? So can we separate vendors? Um, do you want to talk maybe more generally around those recent decisions um, before we address the specific question? Uh, so, yeah, I mean, that's going to be, uh, we, we still haven't a real decision from the CNIL. Uh, we only have a press release uh, at this point, uh, but it's likely to be uh, fully aligned with the, the, the Austrian uh, Data Protection Authority decision. Um, to not going into too, too, too much details on this, I would just say that the, the reasoning behind uh, these decisions is that uh, the IP address is used uh, with other combined with other information. Um, and uh, by relying on Google Analytics, eventually the data ends up in the US for whatever purposes, I'm not an expert. Uh, but the, the thing is, the, the measures that are um, put in place by Google uh, do not appear to be sufficient and to provide the, the right level of uh, data protection. As a result, there is no uh, legal basis for the transfer and the transfers to the US are unlawful. Um, so I, I think I agree with Mario, uh, even though that it's just a question, I, I think uh, 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 IV Europe is going to need to address this point as well. They are going to have to disclose information regarding the regarding whether um, data transfers to the US specifically uh, occur in the background. Um, it's it's not really uh, addressed in the APD decision, but they are mentioning it. Uh, they are saying that they don't have any proof. They don't have any evidence that data transfers occurred, but they think it happened. And so they're probably going to look into that uh, when working on the action plan with the IED Europe. So that's definitely something that's going to need to be addressed. Thank you, Thomas. Are there any questions that we haven't received? We answer to. Um, I think we've covered most of the topics. I'm, I'm looking through the questions. And some of them I think we have um, discussed in, in different ways, but I think we've covered most of these questions at the moment. Uh, I think there are two or three topics that are not really questions that we see coming obviously in the question in the, in the chat that obviously make a lot of sense. So the first one is what we discussed previously around, um, can the IB Europe get the TCF back into compliance? Um, and, and as a publisher, should I expect that that will happen or not? I think this question we discussed, our, our personal feeling at the moment is yes, but obviously um, uh, you're, you're perfectly welcome to disagree on that. The, the second topic that I see uh, coming up pretty often and that maybe this group would want to comment on. Um, but I'm just looking for one of the questions on that. Uh, is, sorry, is on, is on um, the number of vendors. That's something we've discussed at length as well in terms of how many vendors can really, uh, how many vendors is too many. Um, again, that's extremely hard to, to do here. Remco uh, mentioned Interestingly, the Dutch uh, DPA recommended 50 as an acceptable number, um, but generally the APD did not make any clear comment on that. So we can't say whether 50, 100 or 200 is the right number. What we did mention that's more for helping publishers is that from a monetization perspective, um, our analysis and agnostics work uh, seems to be around 200 for websites and 50 for mobile apps is the right monetization, uh, is the right number of vendors for optimizing monetization. Again, it is not a compliance uh, recommendation. It's just for you to kind of like think about 
what you need to do from there, right? If you feel like you know what 200 makes sense for you from an advertising perspective, then what number are you comfortable with as a business from a compliance perspective and how do you get to that number uh, is the type of question you should be asking yourself and we can, we can help you with more precisely. Um, I think in that the third theme that I saw coming for you often was what are we going to do as a CMP, both from a product perspective, but also from a legal perspective. Uh, there is no question we just got from Chris on that, Thomas. I don't know if you feel like you've answered this one already. Just let me know. But it was I, CMPs I, were called by the APD as joint controllers. What is your views on that? Yeah, I, I touched on it. Um, I, I, you know, our current stance is that we were still digesting the, the decision. So, um, I'm not going to be able to provide any st straightforward uh, answer, but the, the the reality is we've always seen ourselves as a data processor. Again, that's why we only come up with recommendations, and we're not any um, we're not imposing any change uh, because we don't we don't know what our customers are going to need uh, in terms of compliance. Uh, but ultimately, it's likely that we're going to we're going to have to consider ourselves. Uh, a controller so not necessarily a joint controller but a controller at least with respect to the consent information the tc string and if we do eventually we're going to have to come up with uh with the legal basis uh, uh with a legal basis and so we don't know yet whether that's going to be legitimate interest or consent um i recently uh looked at the the german dpas um guidelines on cookies and they were considering cmps as data processor so it would appear even though that um you know many dpas were involved in the APD decision it would appear that they, uh, there's not like an harmonized view uh regarding uh, cmp's role um so we're gonna we're gonna have to work on that uh I, I think our positioning is a bit different from other cmps there's many cmps in the market that are actually doing something else with the data and that's why they, they could be considered a uh, data controller that wasn't our position and opinion on uh, until now but we're gonna have to think about it I, I think we're gonna end our webinar here i feel like we've covered most of the questions that we've seen um, again, to everyone, our job today was to present the decision, present what we think are or should be your like immediate short-term um, uh, actions to put in place. You, you want to, I think we all want to recognize that this situation is going to change often and fast. So uh, on our side, what we'll do is keep our documentation updated and, and keep working on it. We'll keep the communication open as well. Um, if you have more questions, feel free to send them our way. We'll, we'll uh, try to add everything to our documentation as we go as well and try to keep pushing recommendations to you uh, so that everyone can can uh, can work on that together um, as i mentioned you know we'll see what the next few months have uh, have in in store for us but uh just except for now that the situation will change often in the coming months i think we need to be agile here as uh, as an industry uh and we'll do our part in keeping everyone up to date on what's happening and, and what needs to be addressed as we go thanks a lot everyone for joining us today and uh, feel free to uh, keep in touch.